Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have something nice, a new addition to my Keatley collection. And it is the Keatley 776 and that is a frequency counter. By default it comes with two channels to, up to 225 MHz. But you can add several options. So we have a look uh, at that. Um, it, I bought it as uh, taken from a working environment. So uh, if they knew it was working, it would have said working, tested. It didn't say that it said taken from a working environment. So it's kind of dangerous. But if the t seller is trustable, you can take your candle. And I did. Let's have a closer look. Here we have it from the front. It looks still uh, quite good. It is a little bit later than my other uh, Keatleys. I think this is uh, 1999, maybe 2000. It looks uh, yeah, a little bit more modern. It is a proper aluminum front with a nice sticker. And uh, well, it has that famous brown Keatley color. Uh, we have the feet, that's a good. Aluminium, also aluminium, but still it's not that light, it's quite deep actually. Yeah, 14 inches, 36 centimeters, and big transformer in the back, external input for the gate. We have here the clock, out or in, internally selectable. I think you can select 5 or 10 MHz and then if you want it in or out. Some trigger outputs. It is set to 230. Normal European plug. And it says it has the 2.4 option installed. And that is great. Because then you also have the high stability TCXO, which makes it more stable. Uh, we have the IEEE interface. Well, let's try to power it up. And uh, about the color, if you're not known, this is my Kidley collection. And uh, well, it is this very distinct brownish uh, color. And I think it will be a great addition to this collection. So let's try to power it on. I put the plug in. A lot of digits. I think it's 10. Oh, and I think it's set here what options are in. Okay, let's try that again. A lot of digits 776, 2.4G, software 124. I don't know if the 124 is the latest, but this is what I have. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 digits and an exponent display. Um, Frequency A, frequency B, and C. Well, let's uh, connect. It needs to heat for uh, 30 minutes for the internal oscillator to be stable. This one probably has the TCXO option, but we can only find that out when we open it. But uh, usually with the 2.4, it uh, came with that. So now we're going to do a little test. It still needs to heat, but I uh, just want to see how uh, close it is already. I will put just my reference signal directly in the front. So that means I need to put it in the A or the B channel. Let's we'll just put it in the A. And uh, what we see here that it is a little bit off. Uh, I think I have another digit. No, no, no this is all. One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is all digits already. Okay, well, we need to let it heat a little bit. And then we can uh, adjust also the internal oscillator. Let's try some higher frequency. I have here another generator also connected to the external reference. Let me see. 190, or oh, we can put that in the C channel. Then, of course, the C channel will also be a little bit off. Yes, here we have. And now we are losing a digit. Let me see if I can do something with the gate time. 
Oh cool, you can really set it very precise. Let's do 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Let's see if we then get the extra back. Yes, there it is. Cool. Then we have a bit, little bit of a more difference, but uh, let's heat it a little bit. Well, while it is heating, we can just do a test if it actually will go to 2.4 gigahertz. I will put my guide time uh, back. I think reset is put both. Yeah. Uh, guide. Okay. Let's get some higher frequencies. I'm using here the, the little uh, WBSG1 from the BG7TBL. What are those little green boxes here? And this is the... This is the first version, the WBSD1, and it's connected to external reference, so that's perfect. And I'm now on the second port. There is also a newer one available. I have that one here, that is the SG2, but uh, I still need to connect it. It has a bigger display, a little bit more options. So let's get a little bit of a higher frequency. Let's go first to 200, and then we can go up. Does it do a giga edge 1200? It doesn't look to have a problem with that. Why well, should do 2.4? Let's just go to 2.4. Does it do that? Yes, can we have an extra digit as well here? This will take a little bit. Yes, so even on the high frequencies, you can have all your digits. That is pretty cool. Uh, let's see how high it will go. So I can do maybe a little bit extra. It is not completely fair because I think instead of 15 millivolts or 50 millivolts, I'm now just doing 0 dB, I think. So. No, 2.7 is too much. 2.6. Yeah, that is still good. Well, we can go maybe a little bit higher. 2.65. No, yeah, that is still. Okay, that is a nice surprise. The 2.4 gigahertz module does work. And the normal e inputs also seem to work. So, fully working. And, uh, well, it's a little bit off, of course, if I connect it to external reference, that problem would, will be solved immediately. But, of course, I want this SL, uh, oscillator adjusted perfectly. So, let's open it up and see where we need to adjust it. Okay, well, I think it's just these four uh, screws here in the side. Uh, we'll just open it. It has a few scratches. It is not that dirty. It looks uh, pretty good. These are not the original screws because they are way too long. That's not needed. And this seems more like an original one. It has nice black. And it really goes in. This one sticks out while this one is flat. So I will need to find a little screws for that. Oh yeah, yes clearly this is a lot more modern than my other Keatley's. On the chip here is 1977, but that's an old Intel chip. I see here 98, 99, yeah so it's indeed 99 or something. Here is the EEPROM, it holds the software. This is version 1.24 it says. Well we saw that in the front, so that is true. Probably the 2.4. And let's zoom in on the TCXO. So here we have it. It runs on a 10 MHz temperature compensated. And uh, I think you can switch here from internal to external and here from 5 or 10 MHz or the other way around. But it is very well described in the manual. So if you want to switch it over, you really need to set the jumper. 
But uh, I like to keep it running and adjust. This is a 10 turn pot. So we can set it exactly to our 10 MHz. So that is interesting. It is a TCXO, a temperature compensator torsulator. But now it is 280, and when I opened it, it was to 080. So how does that compensate for its temperature then? Because now it will be dropping. That is uh, kind of weird, to be honest. Okay, so far for a temperature compensated because how is it possible? It drops so much. There must be something else. It is just affecting the whole oscillator. So, well, I got it as good as I can get it, but it will still slowly go up, up, up as the device get uh, warmer. And I think the whole point of some TCXO would be that it is less sensitive for temperature changes. And that is clearly not the case. So probably it's not original, or it is just broken. The, the TCXO, that, uh, that the heating element is not uh, working correctly. Because look, when I open, this is a, well, I'm running it on external reference anyway. And well, the, yeah, it does feel a little bit warm, but the, the whole, the whole thing gets warm. It's 50. The whole thing is 50. That is kind of hot. <laughs> well, probably it it is the problem that the board is getting too hot. Because if I measure this, this one is L, L1. And it is supply voltage. And this inductor is getting way too hot. 60 Celsius is too much and of course everything will heat up and this is another one is 50 and this is the hot spot here. And we have a lot of those uh, tanti lumps here. Those, uh, we say tantal. They have, uh, yeah they will short. So this is maybe the problem why it draws a little bit more current than it should be and then of course the this uh, inductor in the supply voltage line will get very hot. Uh, I found also this is for 5 to 10 MHz. And if I want to connect it to external reference, I need to move these two jumpers up. So that's exactly what I will do. And then yeah, later we can have a look at the, the temperature. Documentation is very good. Just say up for external. Down, that's the current position for internal. So let's try what it does on external reference. And uh, I switched it off. So let's just pull the jumpers and move them up. So it is very good with error messages. It expects it now, no ref. So let's give the hint some ref. So that is better. It's always that large uh, digit, of course. Maybe if I put it a little bit longer, 
then you are sure you don't miss one count. So yeah, on ten seconds it's spot on because the faster you get this, the bigger is the risk also that you miss one count and then you will see that back in your digits. But now on ten seconds it is no problem at all. Uh, probably also on the higher frequency. 2.4 megahertz, switch to channel C. Yes, that is 2.4 gigahertz. Well, <clears throat> even though it works well now on the external reference, still the whole oscillator board's, board gets way too hot. And uh, it's only like 8 or 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 eight of those uh, tantalums, so I'm just gonna re uh, replace those. I have here the, the component layout and exactly what capacitors need to be and they are all uh, 10 micro for 25 volts. Well, I bought some of those and these newer ones are also very very small so I don't think I will have any problem fitting those in and I think they are all the same value so that is also very easy you just need to look for the polarity but that's it so let's get the board out So I replaced all those uh, tanti lamps or uh, those tantals and um, yeah it it improved a little bit but not much to be honest it still gets a little bit hot it's still like 45 degrees which seems a bit hot but I also saw in the schematic that it's actually a 500 megahertz multiplier so maybe it's supposed to be a little bit warm uh, but that doesn't uh, still explain why the why the temperature compensated oscillator is so sensitive for temperature so maybe there is just something wrong with the little oscillator itself so we can have uh, another look with that but it did improve a bit I'm running it on uh, external reference I already gave it a little clean so here it is from the front I gave it a good clean it is almost like new the BNC's are shiny 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 the buttons are light gray now much much better I'm running on external reference so if it detects that it should not complain okay it does not let's uh, have a look on the C channel and it should be 2.4 gigahertz and it is we would like, of course, an extra digit, so we say gate. We increase the gate. 10 seconds. And we wait. So that was the Kidly 776 with the 2.4 gigahertz uh, option. It does work. The internal uh, TCXO is not that stable uh, we need to have a look at that later but it runs super super cool on the external reference it uh, does get a little bit hot so that needs investigation thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you next time